Tyler Turner, welcome to In The Pews. Awesome. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. Now, I understand you drove all the way in from San Antonio. Yep. Came in last night. Um, I'm a high school official for football. And so we had a Friday Night Lights game and uh -huh. then 2 a.m. got here. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Are you staying with relatives or friends? Yeah, my in-laws. They uh, they live out here in the woodlands. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much for taking the trip. Now, I understand that you are a convert from... The Baptist Church uh -huh. um, that bred over to a non-denominational uh, background. And then here we are in the bosom of the Catholic Church. Wow. Now, did you grow up here in Houston? I did. I grew up in, uh, in Sugar Land, Siena. Uh huh. So you were not Catholic when you grew up? No, no. Ba um, Baptist all the, Baptist, all the way. Baptist my entire life. Um, I was received into the Catholic Church June 13th, uh, 2021. So uh, two years ago. Okay. So you lived most of your life as a Baptist? Yes. So yes. growing up, it was all Baptist church with your, with your family. Baptist church. Um, then when I went to college, I went to Texas A&M. I uh, started going to some non-denominational churches. Uh -huh. um, and then when I graduated, I actually, I moved to New York to work in banking. And so I uh, went to Hillsong, um, actually. And so a huge, huge Protestant church. Um, and then it was COVID that I moved back to Houston. Um, and, and that's where this journey begins. Wow. So growing up, what did you think about Catholics? So growing up, we had a super diverse, you know, friend group. I had a super diverse background. And so um, I, I knew a lot of Catholics, uh -huh. right? Um, so it was, I don't understand why they, you know, pray to Mary. Are they worshiping her? What is going on there? Uh -huh. um, the mass, I didn't understand it. You know, I'm used to awesome praise and worship music. And then I'm used to, you know, hearing a hundred Bible verses throughout a sermon uh -huh. and, and, you know, the homilies were short. So it didn't really make sense to me, but I didn't know a lot of Catholics. So I didn't, you know, necessarily have an issue with it. It just, it wasn't for me. Okay. So did you go to, you know, masses every once in a while? Every, every once in a while I would go to masses and um, my college roommate, my best friend, he's actually the godson uh, a godfather for my son, he um, he was Catholic. And so we would actually trade off in college. Um, I would go to mass a few times with him and then he would go to whichever Protestant church that I was going to. Um, and then my freshman year roommate, he was a uh, Catholic and he actually entered the seminary this year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Who's that? Um, his name's David Neal. He's out of Austin. Right okay. Now. And he's there in the, the seminary. Yes. That's, that's fantastic. So growing up, you have a pretty positive you know, opinion or, you know, view of Catholicism, but you just kind of dabbled in it. Yeah. So I would say um, with Catholicism, it was, it was an option amongst many. Okay. Right. It was, it was, I saw it as an, an option amongst many and a, a, a cultural fit for a lot of the friends that I had, um, mm -hmm. you know, their grandparents were Catholic, so that they were Catholic, but you know, I grew up, my grandfather was a Baptist preacher. And so mm. I was really biblically literate. Uh -huh. And a lot of my friends that were Catholic simply weren't. Uh -huh. And so, you know, I kind of had the, you know, in my head, you know, the, 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 the moral thought that, well, I mean, I know the Bible, they don't. So I don't know what they're learning in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> so did you feel like, oh, I'm superior? Yeah. I mean, to, to a certain extent, just because, I mean, you know, from, from that perspective, you know, the Bible alone. Right. And so you really do dive into scripture uh, because that is, you know, one of the sole ways that you can, you know, unite yourself with Christ. Uh huh, and that's how you grew up. That's that's how I grew up. Did you think about becoming a, a preacher yourself in the Baptist church? You know, I've I've always loved to speak. Uh, my grandfather was a preacher. I think my dad considered it, uh -huh. um, but I was super focused on athletics and in 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 business and wanted to be an entrepreneur. But I'm not going to say it didn't cross my mind because you know I could have been an entrepreneur and a preacher. You know, it's it's one uh -huh. of those things where you can you can do both. So it 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 did cross my mind. It's not like Catholic when you decide yeah, to become you, a priest. That's <laughs> yeah, you're, you're celibate. You're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you leave everything else you, behind. You literally, yeah. I mean, like the disciples. I mean, you, you go and follow, right? You you still kind of have one foot in, you know, your interest um, in the Protestant community I was in, and then you can still, you know, hold a church. It was an option. It was it was an it was an option. Just like the Catholic Church at the time. It was exactly. An, it was one of many options. Did you did you ever date any Catholics? I did not. I did not. I never I never did date any Catholics. And and I would honestly say um, it wasn't until college and after college that I met um, really devout Catholics that I could really dialogue about Scripture and that actually really did know their faith. Mm, so growing up, the Catholics you knew were kind of just peripherally Catholic. I mean, we were we were kids. 
right? And, yeah, because you and, don't really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, we're, we're, I was kids. like that. Yeah, yeah. it's like I, that was me. Yeah, <laughs> love Jesus. Okay, check. <laughs> <laughs> go and go and do my Sunday mass. Yeah. Check because my parents said so. Yeah, you know. Memorize a couple verses in case anyone quizzes you. Check. <laughs> Choose a saint that you like. Check. Yep. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that was it. And but the, but it was after college. That's when you started. Yes. You and your friends. The yep. ones that uh, that you knew that you went to church with. So so actually, um, I had a really good friend, um, and he uh, went to college. We went to high school together, and so when he went to college, he had this radical conversion, mm. and um, he started posting on social media all these things about Catholicism. And at this time, you know, I was really getting more, you know, um, into scripture myself, and you know, you start having some, you know, alarms that okay, is this. Catholic teaching contradicting what I'm reading in the Bible from my, you know, interpretation, uh-huh. right? And so uh, we disagreed about some things around Catholic social teaching, right? Because I was still Protestant at that time. And so we began dialoguing. And um, that's when he pretty much made a definitive and bold statement to me after kind of months of dialogue. And, and he presented me and he, he basically, the proposition was that the Catholic church is the one true church that Jesus Christ founded. And I mean, that statement's either true or it's false. Right? How, do you, how do you react to that? Well, I mean, it's unsettling, uh-huh. right? Because it's an audacious claim, right? Yeah. Like it, it's a bold claim. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's saying, well, this is the truth. And, and it's not an option amongst many. This, this is, you know, the way that Christ designed the ordinary means that he gave us. And so, I mean, it's unsettling because my whole life is, I mean, I don't have that perspective. Uh-huh. What are you trying to say? You know? Yeah, it's like I can I can worship the way I want to worship. Yeah, I, I can worship. I can worship the way I want to worship. Uh-huh. Um, you know, church is 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 just me. It's not an actual uh, visible uh, sign that distributes sacrament, sacraments. It's not a physical body. Um, you know, so that's unsettling to any you know convert. So you grew up thinking, oh, if I don't like this particular church, I can go to that church. Yes, I can go to, and I'm still in. You know, I'm yes. still good. And and then too, you know, as you know you begin to really get into Catholicism and you understand mortal and venial sins. And, um, you know, that Catholic guilt's real as a, as a convert, (laughs) I will tell you that because, you know, I had never done an examination of conscience. I had never actually sat down and understood where in my life am I having shortcomings? You know, where, where am I not reconciling every thought and desire to Christ? Um, and, and from that perspective is you don't have a sense of urgency to holiness. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, it's my, my day to day decisions and day to day choices. You know, they're transient, but I still love Jesus. I'm once saved, always saved. That was my understanding. And, you know, when you get proposals like that and start looking into the teachings of the church, I mean, it, it paralyzes you. It shook me. Wow. So what did you do when, when you had that conversation with that friend? What was the first thing you did? We try to prove him wrong. Right. Because okay. he's, either, <laughs> he's either wrong or right. Right. And uh-huh. so I'm going to try to prove you wrong. Right. And so. I, you know, I, I am an inquisitive person. I always have been. I can dialogue without emotion, you know, and actually uh-huh. look into something, you know, with an unbiased perspective. And so the only way to actually, you know, try to refute those claims is to understand what the church actually teaches. Uh-huh. Like, do they actually worship Mary? Well, let me actually see what the church teaches and not just, you know, what my uh, perception may be. Or what you've always been told. Or what I've always been told by uh-huh. people that weren't Catholic or the Catholics that, like I said, didn't even know the faith themselves. Uh-huh. So you went into church teaching, into Catholic teachings. Yeah. So looking at the early church fathers, right? So you're, you're looking at the Bible. It's like, okay, Christ crucified in 33 AD. Okay, let's start here. Uh-huh. Well, how did we get to 2023? Uh-huh. Like, like what happened? So you begin to read the early church fathers. And I was like, oh, snap. You know, and you, 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 you begin <laughs> to look into history. And then um, even when I was beginning to look into the lives of the saints, the people that the church venerates, is I was looking at them and I was like, these people were so radically conformed to Christ that, you know, if, if this is the servant, who's the fault? Fo- like, you, you, you know, who, who are they following? You know, uh-huh. it, it, it was it was you can't really argue against Mother Teresa. Like, even as a Protestant, <laughs> like she she was a, a holy woman. She period. was living the life. She, yeah. she was. You know, she was embodying <laughs> every aspect of the Beatitudes. So, um, you know, beginning to look into church history um, and then even the origins of some of the practices that I had in understanding, well, actually, this interpretation of the Bible that I have actually just came about. Like, mm-hmm. this hasn't been widely believed. And, and at that point, um, I didn't have enough faith to still be Protestant. Now, what particular teaching uh, did you read that really made you stop and think it, you know, made you take a breath and look back and say, whoa, it was Peter. 
Really? Yeah. Do you yeah. remember any particular? Yeah, uh, in 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 Matthew when it says, you know, on this rock, I built this church, uh-huh. right? Or I I built this church, but I built my church, and it was it was Christ, you know, giving Peter, you know, the supremacy and and being the prince of the apostles. Uh-huh. That, um, what was the church that was built on Peter? You know, what like what 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 was that church? And historically, the only thing that I can find that went back to the time of Christ was the Catholic Church. And and it, it shook me. It 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 shook me that if there was a church back then that was that was visible, that was physical, that that had followers, that had a definitive teaching that said this is in, this is out, it could have been no church but the Catholic faith. So what did you do with that once you, you know, you come to this realization? And you're sitting there, you're reading this and you're like, wow. Yeah. So I think that basically before you kind of, you know, are confronted with the truth or confronted with a proposal, there's like this freedom uh, that, that you have of options, right? It's this idea of freedom, right? Uh-huh. And then once you find the truth and, and you study and you, you find that, okay, this actually is, I mean, you either have to submit to it or reject it. And so like it was, like I said, it was, it was paying in my conscience that I, I can't find the rebuttals I need. So did you talk to anybody about it? So I would, I began talking to him a lot. Um, and then my best friend um, in college, who, who's now my um, son's godfather, uh-huh. um, he was raised Catholic. And like I said, we would kind of trade off going to masses. Uh-huh. And I, I connected. I said, hey, man, um, I know in college I would kind of be telling you that, you know, we need to go to this church because mass is boring, <laughs> you know, because I didn't understand the liturgy. Yeah. Um, and I said, hey, man, I, I think your grandparents were right. Mm. I, I, I truly do believe that the Catholic faith is the faith that Christ left us and, and, and he wants us to be a part of it. And at that point, he wasn't really practicing. You know, he he hadn't been to confession in 10 years. Right. And, wow. and, and, and so we began to have all these conversations and it, it, it kind of hit that we both started building each other up. You know, because even when I had some of the other Catholics in my life that I knew that I had befriended in my adult life, I was getting excited because you just want to share everything when you yeah. convert, right? Like <laughs> yeah. you're just, you're like on a rampage. You're on fire. Yeah, you're on fire. And so I'm, hey, y'all, I was reading St. Ignatius of Antioch. Like if you see what St. Justin the Martyr said, like if uh-huh. you, um, you know, look at the Didache and they were like, what are you talking about? And then it hit me. It was like, wait, what do you mean? Like you never read the church fathers? Like you don't, this is what the church like teaches. Like, this is what it's held. Like, you don't, what do you mean? You don't know what they're talking about. Like, what do you mean you can skip mass? Like I'm reading right here. And it's uh-huh. just like, you, you have to go to mass. Um, and so I think that was a shock. That was a shock of, you know, you're finding all these truths, but then you're realizing that the actual like catechesis level across the board is people don't really understand that. Mm-hmm. And that's why people fall away from it. And that's church. why people fall away yeah. from the church. Now, well, you said you came to this realization was there a part of you that still tried to fight it? That said, no, 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 no. I still got to prove this wrong. I still, you know, because sometimes people dig their heels in. So I'm a really scrupulous person. Right. And, 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 and as a convert, it's hard because, you know, you can get anxiety. And, 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 but in the same breath, it has helped my sense of urgency to holiness. And so when I find the truth, like I'm a committed person, I committed to it. I did. Okay. The hardest part was not necessarily committing to the church because it was it was undeniably true. The hardest part was my social life. Mm, why is that? I mean, because you you fixate, fixated and oriented, you know, everything in your social life and what you consume and what media and entertainment you enjoy mm. uh, to what is pleasurable, what is fun, what is entertaining um, and, and how it reconciles the Christ is kind of a secondary option. And so the deeper you get into Catholicism, you should begin to realize that, you know, all of these things that we consume have spiritual implications and it's hard to detach. Mm. It's hard. You know, you built relationships with a lot of people over decades at that point. Um, and that's who they fell in love with. And then now they're confronted with, well, I don't know who this Tyler is. Who is this guy? Oh, did you talk to a, a like a Baptist preacher when you, when you come to all this realization and all this studying? You, you know, I didn't, I, I, I actually didn't. I talked to quite a few of my friends and, and, um, that were Protestant and really, really strong, goodwill Christians. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I had found is that the rebuttals that I was having uh, and the rebuttals that, that I found answers to, um, you know, biblically, I found them historically um, in scripture. I found them in the catechism. I, I found them even in natural law in studying, you know, just philosophy. Uh-huh. Their answers were kind of on emotion and feeling. 
and, and not doctrinally, this is what has been historically taught. And so I was kind of in the catch 22 of, you know, I didn't have a confidant necessarily. Um, and so I began to kind of talk to priests and I would start going to daily mass and I couldn't receive, but I was just sitting in there and I was saying, oh, wow, these people really do believe that this is Christ in the host. Mm -hmm. um, and my wife, um, she was baptized Catholic. She fell away from the church for about maybe 20 years or so. Uh -huh. um, and so whenever I had my radical conversion, she was like, this is not the guy I fell in love with. What in the world are oh, so you, you talking about? You met each other before you converted. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. And so she had left the faith. And then all of a sudden I'm saying, hey, uh, babe, no, no, we got to do this thing. <laughs> like this, this is for real. So when you got married, what church did you get married in? Um, we got married at the Co-Cathedral of the Sacred Heart. Um, last year. Last okay. Year. But I mean, when you originally... Uh... I, I got I got um, confirmed at uh, St. Teresa's um, in Sugar Land. Okay. So you met each other. You were dating as non-Catholics. As non-Catholics. And then I had an absolute radical conversion. And we were living, you know, a very So you weren't married life. yet when you... No. Okay. No. And we were living a very secular uh, life at, okay. at, at, at that point. And then all of a sudden, you know, I woke up and we put the brakes on a lot, <laughs> you know. Did you think that she might break up with you? Oh, Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So and by the grace a... of God, she, she didn't. And now we're married and we have a child. So that but was a real risk. It, it, it was, but I had even told her, I said, I, I can't walk away. It, 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 it's almost like in the Bible, even um, when on the discourse of the Eucharist, when, when um, Peter says, to whom shall I go? I believe it was Peter, but he says, to whom shall I go? And, and, and that's how I had the feeling I had about the Catholic church. And that's what I was telling my wife is that, I, I can't walk back what I've learned. Uh huh. You know, like we have to submit to this, you know, because there were just so many implications that I was reading into that would affect our marriage that I wanted us to be on the same page. Mm. So she was, she had fallen away from the church. So you, the two of you, do you go into like RCIA together? So I went to RCIA and was confirmed and received um, in 2021. Um, she was confirmed and received about eight months later. She was confirmed and, and fully uh, received into the church. Um, what about, yeah, about six months later. Uh, and so that was a huge, huge blessing. And then she's on fire. She's on fire. That's awesome. So both of you together. Both of us together. And, we, um, <laughs> and then we named our son um, Augustus Tolton. So his name is Tolton. And he was the first black priest in the United States. Wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. So you, what about your friends and relatives? You said that you socially, you were living a different kind of lifestyle. Yep. And you start to make changes. Was there a struggle with, you know, with friends and family? Oh, a hundred percent. There were struggles. I think um, I'm still on the way. I'm still on the, on the road to sanctity. I'm still, you know, striving day in and day out for, for holiness and, and to reconcile every, every desire and intention um, to Christ. Uh, but I would say like saints do make saints. And so there's a lot of my close friends that have really dove into their faith. Um, you know, as, as, as me and my wife have dove in, um, I would say my family as well. Um, you know, I think one of the hardest things for me was socially, when I began to look into Catholic social teaching, I was so convicted on the pro-life cause. Mm. I was, it, it was, it was one of the things that it just, it shook me to the core as, as the conversation of racism in the country, you know, was, was, was at its peak is, is, is that was like, I was we have to defend the, the right to the unborn. We, we have the right to life. We have to. And so a lot of people don't like that. And I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. And so I, I, I did lose quite a few people that meant a lot to me and they still mean a lot to me. Um, you know, and, and, and I'm praying for them and I'm hoping that we can, um, you know, come to sit at the same table and have a, an honest discussion that, you know, Christ uh, loves you and, and has mercy, but these are the teachings. And as Christians, uh, we do have to give a voice to the voiceless. And, and I think that's, um, I, I lost a lot of people um, in my life because of that. And it's, it, it caused some heartache, but um, you have to stand up for the truth. Now we can't ignore that you are a black man. Yes. And then, and, you know, going into the Catholic church, you know, you said that you grew up Baptist that was, was that a struggle with like some of your family? And yes, and yes, it was. And, and, and I think the, 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 the reality is that like representation does matter. Like, even if you look at like Mary it depicted in other cultures, so many times we depict her um, in, in, in our cultural heritage uh, because I mean, we're, we're people, you know, that that's how we receive love. That's, that's how we view and find commonalities and community. And so 
I think I think around like four percent of, of Catholics in the U.S. are black. Mm-hmm. And even when you go to so many major parishes now, there's a very strong African uh, influence in the Catholic Church. And, yes. and they're super strong. But when it comes to a- actual African-Americans, where are we? And, mm-hmm. and, and, it, and it hurts, you know, and, and, and it troubles me because I, I'm trying to invite so many close people in my lives that, that are also black. And it's hard when they're looking for a community, but I can't give them that. You know, the church needs us and we need the church. Um, and, and, and so that has been one of my main priorities that I'm trying to drive, you know, since my conversion of bringing more of my brothers and sisters in. Yeah, because you don't want to be the token black guy. You don't, you don't want to be, and, and expert, <laughs> especially when, you know, you're standing up for so many causes that, I, that affect our community. Yeah. You know, abortion kills the most black people. Like, it, like it, this is targeted to us. And, and, and this is one of those things that, hey, if we all get on one accord and, and we all, you know, restructure the, and, 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 you know, stop listening to certain media and entertainment that puts us in a bad light and leads the vice and not virtue— and, and talks about our women in derogatory ways, I think we can really see a shift in our own culture. But we can't have that conversation unless we're all kind of on one accord. Now, as a, as a black man, you mentioned Catholic social teaching and, you know, race issues. What, what you know, about Catholic social teaching, you know, hit you the most? So terms? during my conversion, when I was really looking to the church, it was actually at the height of like the George Floyd incident, mm. right? And so... Um, there, there was kind of a racial divide in, in a lot of communities and in the country, right? And so when I started looking into Catholic social teaching, I was really beginning to see that race is beautiful, culture is beautiful, language is beautiful, but that is not our primary identity. Our primary identity is in Christ, mm-hmm. right? We're made in his image and likeness, all of us across every nationality, yeah. every ethnicity. And so what I was beginning to see is that so many uh, people in my community, especially in the black community, we were putting race in being, you know, pro-black um, in a, in a position to where we would negotiate on Christian values and Christian morals. And I'm sure that happens in other communities too. I'm just specifically speaking about, you know, us right now. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, it, it troubled me because we have to be pro God first. We, we cannot compromise the teachings of Christ for different circumstances. And, um, that, that began to kind of hit me is that our, our identity is in Christ and, you know, the Catholic church. Um, and then from that, we can, you know, look at all the different cultures and ethnicities in their correct light and orient ourselves, um, accordingly. It's crazy how all of this is happening at the same time you're having your conversion. Yep. (laughs) Wow. On top of that, uh, this past, uh, Easter, my mom, uh, at 58 years old, she converted to the Catholic church. Wow. That's fantastic. Yes. Yes. Wow. And my sister, she's a big listener. Um, a father, Mike Smith's, uh-huh. Um, so she listens to the catechism in a year, the Bible in a year. And so um, it's awesome. It's a blessing. That is wonderful. Now, you were recommended by Gabe Castillo. How, how did you and he get the, you know, in contact with each other? Yeah. So when I was in RCIA at St. Teresa's, um, where, where Gabe's at, um, I was going to adoration for 33 days straight. Because when you're converting, I mean, I had so much spiritual warfare because you're detaching from so many sins, mm-hmm. um, so much lust and all of these things that, you know, of, of, of the flesh. And so I had so much spiritual warfare going on and so much scrupulosity. So I was instructed to go to adoration for 33 days. And I would always see Gabe in there. Mm-hmm. I didn't know who he was. I had no idea. I didn't know anyone at the parish because this is like at the height of COVID. Right? Uh-huh. But, but I would see him in there. And then um, at that time, I couldn't go to confession yet. But I would still go look in the church and sit at the, at the back in the pew and just, just sit in silence and soak it in. Uh-huh. I didn't know what to do. I just knew I should be in there. Um, and I would still see Gabe. I was like, dude, why is this guy always here? So anyway, um, my family and I, we went to Mass one Sunday. And um, we were walking out, and I just walked right into him. Like, I opened the door to leave the church, and he was looking at me. It was, it was weird. <laughs> and uh, he was like, hey, do you want to help teach the youth? And I was like, yeah, sure. And, and from that, um, I was under him for faith formation, uh, for the confirmation for the youth at, at St. Teresa's. And um, we, we built a good friendship. And um, I just learned so much from him um, that, you know, I look at him as a mentor and, you know, here we are. Oh, he's a great guy. Yes, he is. He's given us some fantastic recommendations uh, over the years with, with the podcast and the support he has of the show. It's fantastic. Now, you, you, you start building your life now around your faith. What was the... As a as a convert, what was the the most 
I'd say the most difficult part of converting to the church? The most difficult part. Or something that most people wouldn't think about. What, what, is there something that, as a convert, people don't realize that you have to deal with? I would say the most difficult part for me particularly was the intellectual ascent that it takes. And, and, and it is a movement of the Holy Spirit in the heart. And that's, that's where it, it, it solely has to be to actually reorient your life. But I think it was the apologetics piece. Because if you've done something your whole life, and then all of a sudden you switch course mm-hmm. with, with teachings that are really different, <laughs> uh, you know, from your prior <laughs> understanding, is that you have to give a defense for the faith. You have to give a defense when people ask you, why Mary? Uh-huh. Why confession? Why is the priest celibate? Uh-huh. You, you, you have to be able to give an answer that is both biblically accurate, um, that is historically, um, you know, in line, um, and then also understand from the Protestant community where that understanding came from. And so from an apologetic standpoint, you know, that's really important. I look, I look up to people like um, Saint, uh, Cardinal uh, John Henry Newman. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as a convert, like I looked up to him because these people gave defenses for the faith. You know, G.K. Chesterton, even like a C.S. Lewis. Like, Mm, yeah, I think to me, that was the hardest part is that when I'm getting these answers, I owe it to my loved ones to know why I believe what I do. That must be even harder than being a cradle Catholic, because as a cradle Catholic, people just say, okay, you know, you you grow up as a Catholic. It's kind of accepted. Yes. But yes. then if you're converting, you've got to defend why you're converting. You, you have to defend why you're converting, and then you also have to prove the accuracy of it and, and why this, this is something that you should look into and not good for me, not good for you, no worries. What, what kind of reactions have you gotten? I think the reaction has been positive just because I've really laid out my case. I, I, I've really and, – and then, too, I think that um, – the proof also is in sanctity. This switch has made me a better husband, a better father, uh, a better son, a better friend, a better coworker. And so I think the fruit from the conversion is that, well, yeah, this, this guy has really tried to become Christ. And, 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 and so I think that's what people see. And so it's hard to kind of argue with that. Mm-hmm. So as a convert into the church, what kind of reactions have you had to people who are you know, already in the church? You know, when they find out that you've converted. So I think one really interesting thing is that being a black convert has its own intricacies, right? Because because there's just not that many of us, uh-huh. right? Because I mean, you're 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 basically. I mean, this was, um, you know, my Baptist background. That was the the faith of my entire family, and so here it is that all of a sudden now you're starting a whole new lineage of Catholics, mm-hmm. right? Where all my son knows is Catholicism yeah. now, but all I knew was not. Yeah. You know, and so I think that when you when you meet especially cradle Catholics in the church, I think a lot of things that we, um, you know, hold reverence to. Sometimes I feel like they may take for granted, Mm. you know, really understanding um, that, you know, there are structured prayers, really understanding, you know, the incense and the Gregorian chant and and, 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 um, having saints and these role models that you can look up to up and down the centuries from every culture and every walk of life. That's things that I believe some cradle Catholics I've been in touch with, they take for granted. They don't understand the importance of it. Even having just a Catholic community, you have feast days, we have solemnities. We didn't have that, you know, holy days of obligation. We didn't have that. And so when I see some of the creative Catholics, I know not necessarily giving their all to these things. It's kind of like, man, you don't know the treasure that you have. Wow. You don't know what you have. You're skipping mass. Do you really understand what's happened at the sacrifice? <laughs> you know, so I think that's the um, that's that that's the hard part is like like we talked about. People are leaving the church because they don't know. Mm. They don't know. And th- that's what you've experienced. Yes. So when you so you say uh, Another thing is like as a black guy going, you know, as a convert, do people think, oh, you're you're from Louisiana or yeah. your your parents are Nigerian? Yeah. Or so, do you get a lot of that? <laughs> uh, I do, I do, especially because my darker complexion. And my wife is from New Orleans, uh-huh. and so okay. her whole family, yeah, they were all Catholic, right? Um, and so me though, being you know just Southern Black Baptist, I mean, it's even when I still you know around some of my uh, family and friends. Um, they're like, I still don't get this. And it's still, this is still just <laughs> doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. But um, I, I think that we have an oppor- a huge opportunity to have so many African-Americans come into the church. I, 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 I really, really do. 
What's your parish now there in San Antonio? Um, I go to Our Lady of Atonement. It's an Anglican uh, ordinariate. So the okay. Church of St. Peter, yeah. So how does that differ the, the, from, uh, you know, the other Catholic churches? So um, we're at Orientum. Um, the, the, the kind of Anglican, you know, spin on the liturgy, I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, there's like, like a lot of old English. Um, I, I absolutely love it. I mean, it's, it's everybody has huge families. It's, it's very, you know, baby, you know, welcoming. Mm. I love it. Okay. Is is that easier for you to go to a parish like that? That's uh, or it doesn't really. It's actually forty five minutes from my house. Oh wow! But when I walked into that parish, um, you, it, it, I feel like I entered another world. You mm-hmm. know, like just just hearing the the Gregorian chant and in in hearing you know the way that they were singing and just the reverence um, that that I experienced in the atmosphere. And I mean, they smoked that church out with incense. <laughs> like literally, they smoked that church out. So I think from that regard, it was it was an otherworldly experience. For one hour every Sunday, you know, I I can forget everything. That's awesome. What advice do you give to anyone who's you know looking at converting or who has the questions that you had? And that, you know, want to look deeper into it. I would, I would say the first thing is that you really have to put your faith on trial. You have to put your convictions on trial. You have to put what you actually uh, believe and why you believe it on trial. Um, and, and when you do that, you know, you can uh, reaffirm what you do believe, which for me led me into the Catholic Church. Right. Because the, the deeper you get in history, like you'll cease to be Protestant uh, just because the early church was Catholic and it always has been uh, even even to the present day. Um, and so I would say it's it's really just having a hunger and an appetite for knowledge, uh, for truth and just for expanding your faith and really stu- studying the scriptures and not how it just pertains to your life as of right now in your current circumstances, but how it pertains to the whole salvific role uh, that, that Christ has. What advice would you give to someone who's, let's say, um, they're of another denomination and yet they have a friend or a family member that is thinking of converting? So one one thing that I did and that I'm still currently doing um, is that when I converted, I wrote a nine page paper mm. on why I believe the Catholic Church is the church that Christ left us. And this is how I can prove it. And I gave that paper to my mom. And she read it. A year later, she's Catholic. That paper was not the sole reason. The Holy Spirit moved her. She did her own research. She looked on her own. Mm -hmm. Um, But I definitely think that it helped. And so what I'm doing now and then what I think other people can do, especially for family members that fell away or even as converts for people that are trying to get their friends and families to come into the church, is that um, you have to create something. You know, Gabe creates videos. Um, You know, y'all have a podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a writer. I like to write. And so I'm writing a book right now and I'm, I'm directing this book at my um, black brothers and sisters, really all African-American Christians that I can get this in front of. And I'm writing why we need the Catholic church and why the church needs us. Um, and, and I think when you create something that people can digest, because we're consumers by nature, but when we create something that we can digest, people will hear it from you. Right. So, for example, I dove into, you know, Brant Petrie and Scott Hahn. And you start reading all mm-hmm. these theologians. But if I handed a stack of books to one of my friends, they're not going to read it. Yeah. But if I hand them a book that I wrote, they will read it. Yeah. It's something they can really sink their teeth into, something that they can relate to. They can relate to. And then also when you're writing yourself or creating yourself, and even if you're good at singing and you write a song to help someone understand Catholicism better, you can have in your mind the questions that you know those people in your life are struggling with yeah, or those questions that they have. And then you can kind of formulate whatever you're creating around that. And it's from that unique perspective that you have. Exactly. Yeah. And that, that might actually relate to the person who's consuming it. Yeah. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So what advice would you have to, let's say, to somebody who's already in the church, but they see somebody who's converting, somebody like you? Huh, that is a really good question. I think that somebody that's already in the church and they they see a convert is um, welcome in and give us community because the truth is, is that for the most part, if we're a convert, our family has not yet also followed. Mm. And so we are longing for that community. We're longing to celebrate feast days with other people. 
right? And not just, you know, by our by ourselves uh-huh. or maybe just in our in our own household. Um, you know, we're looking forward to the Lenten season, um, you know, with with other people. And so I would say if you are a cradle Catholic or you've been in the church for a while and you see converts, invite them in to share in some of those those, um, you know, traditions that we have in the church, because they probably don't have that community outside of mm-hmm. the church. Is there anything that you wish that the church did differently for converts? I think that if 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 there's one thing, it would be to this day, the most biblically literate people I know are still the people um, from my Baptist and non-denominational background. Um, I think we really do got to learn the Bible. We have to learn, you know, how the magisterium has it to be interpreted, how the church fathers have written. Um, we, 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 we need to, we, we got to be, students of scripture. And, and I would say that's one thing that even coming into the church now, um, I still don't see from a lot of Catholics I know is that they don't know the Bible. And so when you get objections from other people about, you know, Catholicism, you can't necessarily back it up, you know, with the scripture and tradition because you don't know. Mm. And, and, and we're doing our faith a disservice. Because mm. we have the, all this wealth of knowledge that we that we could share. Yeah. I mean, we have the greatest theologians ever. I mean, you have people like St. Thomas Aquinas and, <laughs> and, and we don't know anything about any of his writings, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and you like, we have St. Augustine. Yeah. And, and, That's and, what we're, I was and we're not, we're not even <laughs> utilizing these, these giants we have. Um, and, and, and I mean, you, literally you can just go Google any of the saints quotes and you can uh-huh. make a book just writing their quotes. We we need to use those and we don't. Um, and so I think that is one thing that, you know, the church, we, 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 we got to capitalize on. Now, one of the things that a lot of Protestants have difficulty with when they, when they convert and when they look into Catholic teaching is Mary and the saints. Did you struggle with that? I did. And the rosary? I, I, I struggled. I struggled with Mary. Um, you know, Billy, just thinking that she was an ordinary woman. And, and, and the deeper I had dove into typology and, 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 and dove into scripture, I began to see that, oh, wow, like she is the Ark of the Covenant. And you, you begin to read, you know, Scott Hahn, you begin to read um, all of these theologians and even what the saints have said up and down the centuries. And you saw, OK, wow, I actually see the role that Mary plays in the salvific plan. Right. I, I understand why her virginity uh, is important. In, 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 in how it literally protects the entire plan that Christ had to redeem us. Um, and so it was hard at first, but that was not the hardest domino to fall. I think one of the hardest dominoes to fall would have been like confession. Mm, really? It, yeah. I think that um, just understanding that you're actually telling me that Christ gave the authority to forgive sins to the apostles and their successors and their successors you know, are the current clergy that we have, you know, the laying on of hands. And um, once I began to realize that, it began to make sense, but it was so hard at first because truly it, 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 it forces you to call to mind your sins. And it forces you to really examine your conscience and, and realize that I actually have given consent to do what I know offended God just for my own pleasure, for very temporary means. And it hurts when you really think about it. Do you remember your first confession? I do. I do. It was, um, I think it was a couple of days before my uh, confirmation. Um, and I was sitting, um, I, w- I was sitting in the, the priest office and we were having our confession. Mm-hmm. And um, I had just the long list of everything that I could possibly remember from birth. Oh, well, wow. not from birth, from, from like, what, like six years, as, as, uh-huh. as far back as I could remember. Yeah. And um, as I'm going through the list, you know, I got emotional because I realized how sinful I really was. Mm. You know, it was, it was a reality check. It was that, Tyler, you really believe this stuff, but look at the fruit of your actions. Like, and then, you know, even looking at my relationships um, in the past, I, I began to think about, wow, I hurt a lot of people. Mm. I hurt a lot of people. And if people see me now, um, quote unquote, oh, he's all holier than thou now, uh-huh. what would they think? <laughs> And, you know, of course, there's time, there's room for conversion and we all need to understand that. But it still hit me that, you know, our actions sting and they do leave effects. Yeah. And so I could have been the reason that someone walked away from Christianity or say, oh, yeah, that guy, you know, Christians, they say all this, but this is how he really did. Um, 
that that was a reality check. Oh man, you just got me because I think about the same thing too about my face being on this podcast and what some people who've known me, you know, years ago are probably thinking of that guy. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. Podcast. I mean, even yeah, <laughs> in, in that same light, I know there's people right now probably that you know are probably going to listen and be like, oh, I knew him. Oh, yeah, that guy used to tell these kinds yeah, of jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to do these kinds of things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Wow. You know, right. you just got me right there. <laughs> but 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 I think that's just the fruit of why our actions matter. Our actions matter. And mm-hmm. and and yes, you know, with contrite hearts we're forgiven, but you know, people don't forget things. People forgive things, but they don't forget. And so we really do have to, you know, be Christ to other people in every aspect. So I think that was that was a huge thing that con- confession taught me. And so now mm-hmm. it's, you know call to mind your sins and, and, and try to order your life accordingly. Do you remember your first Eucharist? I do. I do. I do. It was, um, it, it's, it's, you're waiting so long because you're going <laughs> to mass, you go to mass, um, you know, during RCIA, but you can't receive. So you feel yeah. like, like, you, like you're missing the climax. You're missing everything that you're learning about. Yeah. Right. And so, um, it was just truly a blessing to get down on my knees and, 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 and receive Christ for the first time. And then you look at, I, I love Padre Pio and, and, you know, what he even writes about the Eucharist. And that was, that was an awesome experience. That was and, an awesome experience. You know, the, the hours that you spent in adoration too. Yes. Yep. Yep. All the hours in adoration is, well and it, yep and then you couldn't even I couldn't even receive <laughs> wow what did it feel like it was awesome it felt like um truly like here I am I I am Catholic like I've arrived right it's it, job's not done but I'm here I think one of the most moving things was um is when the the priest holds up uh the the, the consecrated host and says behold the lamb of God Mm-hmm. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And that's when it hit me when I had actually heard that for the first time is like everybody, like you hear the bells and everybody had their eyes closed and they were uh, on the kneelers praying. And I, you know, was still trying to figure out what was going on early on. So I looked up and I saw everybody praying and I was like, oh, whoa, like he's actually meaning that this is the Lamb of God. Uh-huh. And, and that's when it hit. And I said, oh, wow. OK. And then you go to adoration and you see people kneeling in front of the um, Christ in the Eucharist and, and then walking backwards so they don't turn their back. And that's when I know, OK, no, no, no. They actually believe mm-hmm. this this nine page document that you said for your, your mom. Do you make that available to other people? Or so is it just something so I'm, I'm actually almost done. I have a book coming out. OK, so it's um, part of the book. You, you, that, that nine pages has expanded to 80. OK, OK. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's basically. um Every everything that I wish I would have knew, okay, um, uh, that 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 brought me into full communion with the church in 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 the biggest objections I had, and um, I think I think God willing it'll bear fruit, and if it doesn't, then I learned a lot in the process. <laughs> you gotta let us know when it's when it's out. Do you have a target date for it? I I I I, I want to say I'll be done by the end of the year, and then we'll kind of start working on publishing and those types of things. But um, you know, just the duties of life are a lot. Uh, but well, yeah, because you're a husband yeah, and a father, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but but I think um, I think by the end of the year I can have it. Done. So we're looking at maybe a, a launch sometime in 2024. Yes. Okay. We will let us know so we can you know post a link to it on Amazon or wherever you're gonna uh, put it up, and yeah, so that we can let people you know who 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 uh, hear your story and know about your story and they can, they, they want to see what, you know, that, that nine page document. Yep. Became. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it'd be great. And um, like I said, it's, it's, it's for everybody, but particularly I'm talking uh, to try to bring, you know, my African American uh, Christians into the Catholic church. That's, that's the target audience, but I think everybody can, can find fruit in it. Thank you so much for, you know, for for putting your effort into that and, you know, for coming all this way to tell your story. And, uh, you know, we wish you and your family the best. Awesome. Thank you.